In this year's our lectures, we introduce some basic and important concepts in calculus. As an entry level course, we often adopt approaches that are intuitively clear, but might not be mathematical rigorous. In particular, we'll not use the famous epsilon delta language. In this video, we'll discuss product and trim rules. First of all, let's look at the product rule. All right, so here's the statement. Uh, suppose that functions f and g, they are both differentiable. And then we look at the derivative or the product fx times gx. The derivative of the product is given by the formula fx times g prime x and plus l prime x um, times gx. So this is f prime x. Okay, all right, uh, let's prove it. Let's try to uh, derive this um, uh, formula analytically. Okay, by definition, By definition, uh, we have uh, the LP prime X, this by definition is the limit as H equals zero. And this is H and the PX plus H minus PX, right? This is definition. And then we plug into, we plug uh, the, defin uh, the product into the expression of PX, which is H equals zero. And this is H, uh, FX plus H, and a gx plus h and minus fx times gx. Okay, now in order to better combine the two terms, we insert a certain, you see here's x plus h, here's x plus h, and here's x and x. Okay, so we introduce an intermediate term, which is minus fx plus h and times gx. Well, because we are minus this extra term, we need to add it back, right? And add this term, Back. And then what do we do is we group these two terms and then we group these two terms and we separate them. Okay, let's see what we get. So this equals the limit. So here we get the limit. Uh, this is the edge goes to zero. And here is the, uh, the edge, the first one, right? So first one, uh, these two things together because you observe, we observe, you see, uh, here we have the common term is fx plus h, fx plus h, right? Uh, let's just uh, move this one to the front. So it's fx plus h, and here is gx plus h and minus gx. So this is the first one. And then plus the second one, the limit. Okay, this is, this goes to here. And the second one is the edge. Uh, you see for the second one, we have this is GX, this GX is, is the common term. We can move to the front. And then the inside is FX plus edge and minus FX, right? Okay, so this is the second term. Now, if you send edge goes zero, you say, okay, when edge approach zero, and we say, okay, clearly, this guy, uh, it just approach to, fx. Now, when you look at this term, what do you get? You say, okay, as h equals zero, by definition, this one just approach to the derivative of gx, right? So this is by definition as h equals zero. Now, this one is similar. You see, okay, well, this gx is fixed, does not change. And then you look at this term, as h equals zero, this one will just go to the derivative of fx. Okay, now you combine everything together. What do you get? You say, okay, so then we just get this one is the fx times the g prime x and the plus this is gx times the l prime x, right? And that is the formula. So fx times g prime x plus l prime x and times uh, the gx, right? Okay. All right, so we have established the product rule. Now let's, let's look at the application. So here, I try to find the derivative of the product of ex times gx, right? So this is so by the product rule. So, so by the product rule, we have this one equals, right? Okay, and I put it here. So x squared and ex and take the derivative. This one equals the x squared prime and ex and then plus x squared and ex prime, right? Now, x squared prime, we know this just equals 2x, and the ex is leave here, just ex, and then plus uh, this one, just x squared is the same. Now, ex 
as we um, uh, derived in the previous video, the derivative of EX is just itself. So this equals EX, right? So EX derivative is EX, this is important. Okay, now, so we combine the thing together. We say, okay, let's, uh, let's combine this into one term just to make it look nicer. So you get 2X plus X squared and times EX. Okay, so this is the derivative of X squared times EX. Now let's look at another application. Suppose we know the function um, GX, the GX and the GX is differentiable and it's not even zero. Then we can look at its reciprocal, right? Okay, so here claims the, the derivative of the reciprocal is given by the following formula. So this is G prime over G square X. Okay, let's derive this. All right, so let's derive this by this correct. Now RX is the reciprocal. So RX times GX equals one, right? Equals one. Okay, so what are we gonna do is let's take a derivative on both sides. What's the derivative of one? The derivative of one is zero because it's constant. Now what's the derivative on the left-hand side? Uh, now we use uh, we can use the product rule, right? We say, okay, use product rule. So here what we get is r prime x times gx and plus the r gx times g prime x equals zero, right? Okay, so from here, I get r prime x times gx equals negative rx and g prime x, right? Okay, uh, what, is, uh, what is rx? Remember, this is just one over gx. So from here, we just get what we want, right? We'll get, okay, so then we get this r prime x. Uh, we divide gx on both sides. And here you have already have one over gx, so it's just negative g prime x over g square x. Okay, so we verify the, uh, the derivative or reciprocal. Now, more general, uh, why you have this? Okay, look, this is just fx times gx, right? If you take the derivative, we can apply the uh, uh, the uh, product rule, right? So it's okay by uh, product rule. So this will be uh, by product rule. This will be just fx times one over gx prime and plus uh, the l prime x times one over gx. Now you see, if you combine, if you compare the formula, you see this term is exactly this one, right? It's exactly this one. And for this one, if you plug this one right here, what do you get? You get this term. You get, uh, we'll get this term, right? We'll get this term equals uh, negative um, fx over g prime x over g square x. And this is exactly the second part, right? The second part. Okay, so then we are done. Now let's look at uh, um, application. So find the derivative of, of uh, function cosecant x and this one. Okay, let's look at the, the cosecant. Uh, cosecant x, we know this one is just equal to one over sine x, right? So, okay, if we take the derivative of this one, we apply the formula. The formula says this equals the negative sine x squared and sine x prime, right? Is sine x prime. And we know what is sine x prime. So, okay, we know the sine x prime, this equals cosine x. So this is just negative cosine x. Okay, so we have, we say, okay, so this is negative cosine x over sine x squared. Now you can further write this is negative cosine x over sine x and one over sine x. And this is equals uh, negative cotangent x. Okay, so this is negative cotang cotangent x, right? So this is cosecant x, right? Okay, just uh, just uh, alternative way to write it. Now let's look at the other one, the other guy. So sine x or x uh, or prime, right? Okay, so this one is equal, we apply the formula. So this is sine x uh, derivative and over x, and then you minus and you um, well, just plus the sine x times one over x prime, right? One over x prime. You can just apply the product rule. And uh, this guy equals cosine x, and then 
this one equals negative one over x squared, right? One over x squared. Okay, so then uh, what you get, uh, just x cosine x minus x squared and times the sine x, right? times sine x. Okay. Uh, now let's look at the chain rule. So what's the chain rule? The chain rule says, suppose your function fx differentiable, another function, which is okay, differentiable at a point x zero, another function is differentiable at a y zero and f x zero, right? At a point. Now, so you can do the uh, composition. Right? We compose these two functions, g composed with f. So this is not a product. This is a uh, composition, right? Now the claim is the composition is differentiable at this point, and this is uh, the derivative. How we get the derivative of the composition? Uh, let's show it. Okay, so then the formula says the derivative of the composition equals the derivative of g multiplied. So this is the multiplication times the derivative of f. Okay, let's verify this. Again, so by definition, by definition, right? By definition, the h prime x zero, this is just the limit, right? Okay, it's the limit. Uh, this will be the h goes zero, right? So this is h and uh, right. So this is capital H, right? So it's capital H, this x zero plus h minus h x zero. And then, we just plug this. Uh, we just plug this. Um, uh, the definition of edge, which is composition, into here, into here. Let's see what we get. So then we know this is just the limit as edge goes zero, and this is edge, and g compose with x zero plus edge minus this g f x zero. Right. So he has composition. Now I'm going to rewrite this as the limit, okay. let's put everything here, All right? So this is h goes zero, we have the limit, I'm gonna rewrite this, it's g, uh, here is the f x zero plus h minus this g, f x zero, and divided by f x zero plus h minus f x zero, right? f x zero, okay, and then times, this is, uh, here you see I add an extra thing here. Then of course I need to put it back, right? So this will be fx0 plus h minus fx0 and divide by h. Okay, I put it back, right? Now you see, you can send the limit. So we can, can you can consider this as two parts, right? So this is part one times another part. This is part two, okay? All right, so what do we want? is less than the h to zero. And for this one, you see, hey, if you send h to zero, what do you get? This is exactly the derivative by definition, right? So this is the definition um, of a derivative sending h to zero. Now let's look at it, uh, look, let's look at the, another one. Another one is um, not completely obvious, but you see, if I look at this one as a fixed point, let's say this is y zero, then, this one will be say it's uh, y. Uh, this will be put is y zero, and this is y, right? So what do we get? So you will, you will see this part. This part actually it's equivalent, right? You say okay, so this is basically could be right as the limit as y because as h goes zero, y actually goes to y zero, right? Okay, so y goes to y zero. This is gy minus g y zero, y zero and over y minus y zero. Now, what is this? So, okay, what's this? And you say, all right, so this is nothing else, but just the derivative of g at y zero, which is f x zero. So this is y zero. Okay, so there you see it's the multiplication, right? If you look here, you say, hey, this is multiplication. So it's multiplication of the derivative of these two guys. So it's right here. The derivative of this, the derivative of this, you see it's the derivative of this multiplied by the derivative of that. Okay, uh, let's see some applications, right? Let's look at this. 
Uh, first of all, let's see the derivative of ex squared, right? Okay, let's see the derivative. Uh, well, this is the composition, right? So this is the composition of the G and uh, with x squared, right? What's the G? So GY equals E to the Y. So it's the composition of these two things, right? Okay. And then we know the derivative of this, which is okay. It's just G take the derivative by the chain rule. So this we now here we use, uh, we use the chain rule. Let's use the chain rule, right? So it's G derivative evaluate this point, and then you take the derivative of that. Okay, so the G, we know the G prime is just EY. So exponential function is just itself. So, okay, so we and this one is what? This is 2X. Okay, so we just get this equals. So this is the same thing as just E to the X squared. So we get 2X and E to the X squared, right? Okay. Now let's look at sine 2X, 3X and take the derivative, right? So this is sine x composed with what? Composed with the three x, right? Composed with this three x. Okay. All right. So then this will be uh, what you get is this g. So here the g y will be. Uh, you say okay. So g three x take the derivative. So g y will be sine y. Okay. So now we get this is g take the derivative. You get a three x and 3x take a derivative, but this one is just three, it's the linear function. And sine y, we know sine y, you take a derivative is cosine y. Okay, so then we get this term will be, this part will be the cosine evaluated at a 3x. Okay, so what do you get? You get three cosine 3x, right? cosine 3x. All right, uh, next one. Then we have, let's look at a sine square x, you would take the derivative, right? Now this is, you can see it as a composition of g evaluated on sine x, take the derivative. What's the g? For this case, the gy is just y squared, right? It's composition of the quadratic function with sine function, right? Composed. Okay, so then by the, again, by the chain rule, right? everything here is by the chain rule. We have g prime evaluated at a sine x, and times sine x prime, right? Now, for this one, the g prime y is just 2y, okay? So this is just 2 sine x, right? So y is sine x, right? And then a uh, sine derivative is cosine x, okay? So what we get is 2 sine x times cosine x. If you remember the quadratic formula, this exactly is sine 2x. So we get, okay, so this is an interesting fact. If you take the derivative of the square of sine x, you get is sine 2x by chain. Okay, problem number five. Uh, all right, so now by the chain rule, we are able to derive the derivative of other trigonometric functions, right? Uh, let's look at cosine x. So cosine x, cosine x we know is just sine pi over two minus x, right? Okay, so then if we say, well, all right, so let's take the derivative of this. We can apply the chain rule, okay? So by chain rule. By chain rule, this will just be, you take the sine. So this is like G composed with pi minus X. Right here, GY is sine Y, right? Okay, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. So this is just G. By the chain rule is g, take the derivative at pi minus x and times pi or two pi minus x and the derivative. And we know this is just negative one. So again, it's just negative uh, cosine, right? Pi of two minus x. But the cosine pi minus two of x, uh, we call the trigonometric uh, identity. This is just sine x. Okay, so what you get is negative sine x, right? So by the chain rule, uh, we and also a trigonometric identity, we derive the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So don't forget, there's negative sine here. Now, after this, then of course, we, we, can, we can derive the, uh, uh, the tangent x, right? Let's do the tangent x. So tangent x is uh, sine x over cosine x. Now let's recall the formula in the reciprocal. We know if you do this derivative, right? What do you get? 
this just equals, right? So this just equals cosine x squared, right? By the, the formula we uh, derived before. And here is sine x, take the prime, cosine x, the minus sine x times the cosine x prime, right? Okay. Now sine x, this is just derivative of sine x to cosine x. This is the derivative of cosine x, which is derived. It's negative sine x, right? So don't forget the negative sign here. So you have a negative, negative plus. So the, so the top, what you get is cosine x squared and plus sine x squared. Okay, then this is the basic uh, trigonometric dynamics test. This is one, right? So eventually you say, okay, if you combine this, the numerator just be one and the denominator is cosine x squared. And that is exactly secant x squared, right? Okay. Uh, problem number six, example number six, this is uh, so-called harmonic mo uh, motion. What happens is here, we have a spring and right? we have a spring here and the spring is attached to an object. And then we just stretch the object to a position and release it. Then of course, because of the, uh, because of the force given by the spring, the object will move back. And if we ignore the friction and we know the object will just be moving the back and the force. Uh, this is called a simple uh, harmonic motion. And one way, for example, you, you can just model, you say, okay, so the position at time t is two times uh, cosine 3t. So this represents the, um, uh, the position of this object at time t. Okay, so here I use the uh, number three uh, just to represent some physical quantity. All right, so from here you say, okay, so then if you want to see, if I want to uh, find the velocity, right? So, okay, what's the velocity? So velocity at a time t, will just be the derivative of the position. So this is what we mentioned at the very beginning. This is the physical meaning of the derivative, right? So this is twice of cosine three T, right? Cosine three T, cosine three T, and you take the derivative with the T. Okay, so then by the chain rule, uh, you take the derivative with the cosine, which is sine, evaluate the three T, and then you take the derivative of 3t, right? So eventually you get it's negative six and sine uh, 3t. Okay, so this one rep represents the velocity at a time t, right? So what do we do is you take the, um, the, the derivative, okay. All right, um, another important application of the uh, chain rule is we, we can derive the derivative of inverse function, right? Okay, so let's say f is inverse function of g. It just means if you compose them together. So this is composition, right? If you compose them together, composition, you get x. And then you, you can calculate the derivative of L prime. It just uh, the reciprocal of the uh, derivative of g. Now the reason is simple, Let, let's show it. Okay, so g composed with fx is equals to x, right? And then we say, okay, let's just take the derivative on both sides. The derivative of this one would just be one. Now for this, we say, okay, so this is uh, just, uh, we can, this, this is a position to apply the chain rule. And we know this is g prime evaluated fx and times the L prime x equals one. And from here, we immediately derive the derivative of the inverse is the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function evaluated at fx, right? So that here we give the formula. Now let's look at the application. Uh, okay, so here we, we, we can derive the, uh, the uh, derivative of natural logarithm. It's one over x. Okay. Now, why is that? Okay, why is that? Uh, well, we know the uh, log x is the inverse, right? It's the inverse of the, um, uh, the exponential function, right? So then by the formula, by this formula, we say, okay, so by this formula, we will have the log x take a derivative, right? It's equal to one over, right? So it's okay, let's apply here. It's one over the g. So this will be my gy, right? So this will be my gy. Okay, so it will be g take a derivative evaluated at log x. Now, uh, for exponential function, we know if you take a derivative, it just equals itself. Okay, so we just put it here. So this will be just e itself. Uh, log x. Now, 
what is e log x? E log x is just x, right? So that just means that it's, it, this is because it's inverse function e to the log x is x, right? Okay, so then we get is one over x. So the derivative of log x is one over x. Now, how about the derivative of other uh, logarithm function uh, with another base the a? Okay, so let's derive this. Why this is true? Okay, uh, for this we can just use the formula. So log a x is what? Uh, this I can write as log x and divide by log a. I just use the common base, the natural logarithm, right? And then you see, uh, if I take the derivative of this, it's okay, now let's take a derivative of this, let's take a derivative of this. Uh, this is just constant, right? So this guy is just constant, so it's one over log a. And then you just need uh, uh, the derivative of, okay, so you say, okay, so this is just the derivative of this one. But the derivative of this one, we already get it. It's one over x, right? It, it, uh, it's one over x, so it's one over x log a. So that's how we derive it. Now here, the key is, uh, after we have derived the uh, uh, same derivatives regarding the natural logarithm, then to go to other log, uh, logarithmic functions, all you need to do is just change the base. You just change to the base e, and then you can apply everything you know about the uh, natural logarithm. Okay. Example nine. Uh, now, uh, we can also derive, remember we, we derived it before, right? So if we know that if n is a positive integer, positive integer, then we know if you take the derivative of this basic polynomial, uh, we get x to the x minus one. So this is what we showed before, right? In the previous video. Now here we want to, uh, we want to derive this uh, for any power a. So here a is just any real number. So a is, and just a real number, not necessarily an integer, right? Okay, so I'm to show, okay, so if you have this power function, uh, x is positive to avoid um, the case, this might not be defined for negative numbers. All right, so then it says, uh, you actually, you have the same formula. If you take a derivative of this, you're going to have a x to the a, uh, x a minus one, not y, okay? So what do we do is we say, okay, uh, let's rewrite this. So this is a, right? If I take the log reason, I can pull a out, does this get log x? And from here, I get x a is e to the log x a, right? This is always true because inverse. Okay, so then I just get this is e to the a log x. Then if I take the derivative on both sides, if I take the derivative on both sides, I can apply the chain rule. So this, I can apply the chain rule. And here you see this is just the y. So it's g a log x, take the derivative. And what's the g? The gy is the e to the y, right? E to the y. And by the chain rule, we know this g derivative a log x, right? And then times the derivative of this a log x, I right? take the derivative. Okay, now what is this part? What is this part? So this part is g derivative of y is just e y itself, right? Does not change. Okay, so this one just be e to the a log x. Okay, uh, then what this will just be um, will just be uh, the x a itself, right? X a itself. It, uh, this just x a to the itself as you put to the here. Right? So that's what we what we have here, right? Okay, we already right that's what we started from the very beginning. Okay, all right. And now, uh, how about this one? Okay, so this is a constant. And log x, we know right now the derivative is one of x, right? And then you combine them together. What do you get? You get a, but here you have one over x, you have power a, so it's x to the a minus one. Okay, so again, if we know everything about uh, natural logarithm, we can also deal with um, uh, derivatives of a power function because everything can be uh, converted into uh, into um, uh, logarithm, right? So here, what we did is we know that x a is e to the a log x. Example 10, uh, let's look at uh, the derivative of the, um, of the inverse sign. All right, so we just apply the inverse formula. Let's recall the formula, right? So let's recall the formula. The formula is this f prime. The formula is f prime x equals one over 
g prime fx. The next formula is f equals g inverse, right? Okay, all right. And then by this formula, we'll get a sine inverse x, the derivative equals one over uh, g will be just sine, right? Just the sine derivative evaluated at sine inverse x, right? Inverse x. Now, what is sine derivative y? This is cosine y. Okay, so this is one over cosine, sine inverse x. Now, what is this? This is angle theta, right? So if I remember, this is angle theta. By definition, the sine inverse, this is always between negative pi over two and a pi over two. And here, sine, and for this one, the sine theta equals x, right? So this is definition of sine inverse. Then the question is, hey, what's cosine theta? Well, we know sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared equals one. So from here, I get a cosine theta squared equals one minus x squared. Now, because theta is between um, negative pi over two and pi over two, we know the cosine theta is always non-negative, right? It's always non-negative. And from here, we can deduce, okay, so that means the cosine theta has to be positive, non-negative, one minus x squared, okay? And then we get this is one over the square root of one minus x squared. Okay, so this is how we derive the derivative of sine inverse.